Welcome to ProCAD's Ortho Tutorials. Watch the entire video or use the on-screen table of contents to skip to a specific topic. Module 1, Creating a New Drawing, covers the following topics. Drawing Manager, Toolbox, Borders, and Basic Settings. Let's begin. These tutorials were created using English units. All ProCAD software products support both English and metric units. The first topic in Module 1 is the Drawing Manager. When the Ortho software opens, we see the Drawing Manager dialog. If the dialog does not appear, simply click on the Drawing Manager in the Ortho toolbox, and the Drawing Manager dialog should appear. First, we select our standard to work with. We're using the Twin Lakes project. We can then select inside of the drawing area and then we can create new drawings. Simply select a new tab, enter a file name, hit enter, and the file name is created. Double click the file to open, or right click to see some of the options, like copy, rename, or delete. We can also create new drawings within the Standards Manager. Under the Ortho, we see the existing drawings, and we can also go in and create a new drawing or right click in the drawing area. And if I hit the refresh, we see the latest one that I just created. Another means of creating the drawings. To open the drawing, simply double click the drawing and it opens up. As it is a new drawing, it will ask for a drawing scale. Typical scales would be 3 eighths of an inch equals a foot. Fairly common for English units. For metric units, the equivalent would be 1 to 30. Select OK, and that sets the scale for all of the components when we're creating the drawings. At any time during the drawing session, we can go back to our drawing manager and see the drawings that have been created. The next topic in Module 1 is the toolbox. So we'll take a closer look at our ortho toolbox. We have the drawing manager where we can access it at any time during the drawing session. And then we have all of the tabs for all of the components within the ortho software. The main settings tab has our main pipe size, our branch size, and our pipe spec, as well as other toggles like listing the current settings, setting whether or not we want valve stems turned on or off by default, so some of the toggles that we can use within the software, as well as setting or changing line numbers. Under the equipment tab, we have our horizontal vessels and our vertical vessels. Under the miscellaneous tab, we see things like the centerline symbol, a north arrow, flow arrows, revision clouds, section balloons, different styles of section balloons. We have instrumentation balloons if required. We have our off-page connectors, as well as things like pipe insulation. Under the lines, we see a routing line, limits border line for our match lines, and then standard line types like dash, center, and hidden. Under the auto route feature, we see the toggle to enable or disable auto route, showing the current position or being able to undo the last item. We then hit the flanges tab, which shows all of our flanges, basic flange, a flange with gasket and bolts, a flange set, nozzles, blind flanges, lap joint flanges, and our default insertion point, which could be set to weld point or the face of the flange. Under the gaskets and bolts, we just have gaskets to be placed individually, bolts, or gaskets and bolts. Under the pipe tab, shows our main setting for double line drafting or single line drafting. This toggle should be set at the start of the drawing session. We then have our pipe symbol, the pipe nipple, and the ability to show pipe and doubles. We also have pipe ends, pipe end symbols, and penetration symbols. Under the valves tab, we see all of our common types of valves, gate valves, to glow valves, to ball valves, to control valves, even just to the actuators, pressure safety valves. At the top, we have the flange settings, so we can have flange gasket and valve, gasket valve, gasket flange, or a complete set flange gasket valve, gasket and flange. Under the fittings tab, we have all of our main piping components from elbows to reducers to the T's to things like sockets, threadlets, all of our main components. Under miscellaneous symbols, we have some of the smaller components like unions, caps and plugs, couplings, strainers, all of the miscellaneous types. Pipe supports, we do have a few pipe anchor, 
pipe guides, and pipe shoes. Under structural steel, there are some of the common shapes, from wide flange to standard beam to round shapes, square shapes, angles, and channels. Under the civil drafting tab, we have an option for drawing plant grid lines, grading, radial platforms, ladders. Under the bill of materials, we do have bill of material generator, as well as create lists. Under the utilities tab, we have our borders, where we insert the title block or the border drawing. We have some basic dimensioning tools. We have our line numbers, valve tags, equipment tags, and equipment descriptions. And finally, under the change, we can change layers and some of the features, moving layers, dynamic attribute edit for editing some of the block information if required. At the bottom of the toolbox, we see the ability to change our spec just by clicking on the spec and selecting the available spec. We can also set our main size from eighth inch up to 80 inch, our branch size, and then our line number. The next topic in Module 1 is borders. Before we begin to draw our piping, we can go to our Utilities tab and select the border icon. This brings up the Drawing Size dialog box and allows us to set some parameters. We can work in model space or in paper space. If we select model space, the border is inserted into model space and is scaled up appropriately to match the drawing scale. If we use the paper space, the border is inserted at a scale of 1 to 1 in paper space and a viewport is created at the scale set with the drawing when it was created. We'll just leave it at the default model space and we'll insert the default D size sheet, which is 22 by 34. Click OK. Border is inserted into the drawing and then we see the edit attribute dialog box where we can then fill in the information for our drawing. Drawn by the date. Notice there is a next button to fill in more information, things like the check date, the approval date, drawing number, sheet number, and revision. At any time during the drawing session, we can double click and edit the text. Borders can be customized to meet client or project needs. Other settings we can take a look at for the borders are in our standards manager under the border settings where we dictate the name of the drawings, the drawing units and limits that we use, as well as revision blocks. Also, the file locations tell us where the borders are located. The last topic to cover in Module 1 is basic settings. Before we begin to draw, we must set our basic settings, like the size, the spec, and line numbers for the drawing. Down in the lower left corner is the easiest area where we can access this. This shows us our active settings. So it shows us our spec, and we can set the spec to whichever spec we require for the drawing. We can then set our main size all the way up to 80 inch. We can select the branch size that we'd like as well as our line number. If there are no line numbers set, we can create a line number simply by clicking on the new line number tab and entering a line number. We can also set the line numbers in our standards manager. We open up our standards manager, click on the lines tab, we see all of the lines available within that standard, in this case the Twin Lakes project. At any time these can be toggled on and off so that they are visible within the drawing environment or within that standard. We can create new line numbers, we can rename, and we can delete line numbers. We can also set the specs that are valid within our project as well. So we have our common specs, and then we have our Twin Lakes project. Once these values have been set, we can then begin to draw. This concludes the topics covered in Module 1. Please review Module 1 or select another module.